Hi everyone, and welcome to topic five, the statement of cash flows. This is the last of the main statements that we'll be looking at in this particular subject. Of the learning objectives, there are four listed here of which we will focus on three of them and only two of them in, in detail. Assess the purpose and usefulness of the statement of cash flows. We'll look at the format and the classification of cash flows in the statement of cash flows. In terms of the final two learning objectives, to produce a statement of cash flows as well as to evaluate an entity's performance, we'll have separate videos which will focus on each of them. So we'll look at producing a statement of cash flows in one video, and then we'll look at evaluating an entity's performance using a statement of cash flows and some real data to have a look at kind of what's going on. So the statement of cash flows is, as the name suggests, literally a statement which reports, funnily enough, cash flows. So it looks at cash flows coming in and cash flows going out over a period of time. And that period of time will be, generally speaking, the same period of time that the statement of profit or loss deals with. What it really helps users to do is to ascertain the cash generating ability of the entity. Because when you look at the statement of financial position, you can see the opening cash and the closing cash within that particular business or particular entity. But what you don't know is what has changed, what has caused that cash to increase or decrease, had there been lots of flows in or out, or has it just been a small amount that has been added or subtracted from it? And where these flows come from and what they get used for is really, really important. It also helps us understand where the receipts have been collected in a timely manner. So on the right-hand side, and this is obviously for a retailer, retailing type organization, in terms of a general kind of flow of how cash moves. So inventory purchase, now cash doesn't necessarily have to move at that particular point. That could be the order being placed and then the inventory arriving. The inventory will then generally get pay, be paid sometime after that. And it depends on the terms that you have with your particular suppliers. So inventory gets paid and wages get paid usually after you've used them. Then the inventory gets sold. Now the receipts from the sales, that fourth point may happen at time of purchase, or it may be that those receipts are collected sometimes afterwards. Now that means there is a timing mismatch between when the inventory and say wages are paid for and when money and cash is collected from sales. And so it's good to understand how entities collect and use their cash. So one of the things we looked at in the last topic was accrual accounting and accruals focus on when the revenue is earned or the expense incurred. What you'll notice with the accruals is there's no focus on when cash moves. Now there is an underlying assumption that cash will be collected or will be paid, but it's not actually focusing on when that happens. When we look at cash accounting, cash movements focus on when cash is received or paid. So if we think about two time periods, time one or time zero and time one, for an airline, they will receive cash up front. So when you go and buy your tickets, you pay them. Now, it may be you directly paying them or maybe through your credit card provider, but ultimately the airline will, will receive that money before you take the flight. Then you take the flight somewhere. They receive cash up front. So from a cash flow point of view, that is when the cash movement takes place. But from a revenue point of view, it is when the service is provided. And these may happen in different time periods. Now, there's obviously examples where you can earn the revenue before you receive the cash. And the same holds true in both cases for expenses. You can have expenses being incurred before cash is paid, and you can have cash being paid before the expense is incurred. So looking at the various statements, what the statement of profit or loss does is it provides performance results for the period using accrual accounting. The statement of financial position shows the entity's assets, liabilities, and equity at a point in time. So it's a snapshot of what's going on with that particular entity. The statement of changes in equity show the change in equity between two reporting periods. So is it being caused by profit? Is it being caused by dividends being paid? Is it caused by the owners investing more into the entity? And finally, the statement of cash flows. This shows cash inflows and outflows for the period. Uh, it shows the entity's ability to generate cash flows, uh, to meet financial commitments as they fall due, to fund changes in scope or the nature of activities, and to obtain external finance. 
So having a really good understanding of what the cash needs of the business are and what they're using their cash for is really important for an outside user. And it can be somewhat masked if you're just looking at the other statements. So the cash flow statement is quite an important statement to add to the mix of information you have about a particular entity. So what we have here is the cash flow statement for Woolworths in 2017, and it's a pretty typical cash flow statement. Now, granted, there are quite a range of different activities within the investing and financing activities. In some companies, you may have more. In a lot of companies, you may have a lot fewer line items. But you know this is pretty typical in terms of setup. So the first thing at the bottom here is you have kind of the, not the reconciliation, but how the overall cash gets changed. So the first of the line items there is the net decrease in cash and cash equivalents of negative $38.7 million. So this figure here is simply just the cash provided by operating activities, the cash used in investing activities, and the cash used in financing activities added up. There is a small adjustment for changes in foreign currency rates, which we're not interested here. What we have is at the start of the period, they had $956 million in cash. At the end of the period, they had 916 .7. This information will be seen in the statement of financial position. So you can tell, even without knowing what they've used it on, they are out about $40 million in cash from the start of the period to end of the period. What we don't know, though, is why. We don't know what's caused that. We don't know if they've... If they've lost money on operations, we don't know if they've been buying new property plant and equipment, if they have been repaying money, we don't know what's caused that. So it's important to then look through the rest of the statement of cash flows to disentangle all of that. So the first setup is the cash flows from operating activities and probably one of the most important ones to have a look at because ultimately, if you're in a business, this figure here needs to be positive. If you're not able to generate positive cash flows from your operating activities, you're going to have a problem longer term. And so these figures very much relate to the statement of profit or loss, as well as adjustments to current assets and current liabilities. Because some of these will get based on, they won't turn up in profit or loss, but they will be sort of prepayments for things or accrued expenses or prepaid expenses or accrued revenue or so on. So what we can see very clearly is the two biggest items are receipts from customers and payments to suppliers. But it's in the right direction in the sense that payment receipts from customers is bigger than payments to suppliers. So they end up with a positive cash flow of $3.122 billion. The second set of cash flows are the investing cash flows. And these relate to non-current assets. And in summary, they very much focus on purchases and sales of property, plant and equipment and intangible assets. You know, there are going to be other small things in there. They talk about sales and purchases of businesses and subsidiaries. But realistically, for most companies, what you're going to see is, and what you see here is payment for property, plant and equipment. So this is capital expenditure. They've got $1.6 billion in CapEx here. They've got payment for property, plant and equipment, property development, another quarter of a billion dollars. They've also sold off a little bit. So they've sold off and made about $300 million in cash from those sales. Net cash using investing activities, they've spent about $1.4 billion overall on investing activities. The final set of cash flows are the financing activities, and these relate to changes in non-current liabilities and equity. So essentially, have you borrowed money or have you repaid it? Or have you sort of, gone off to the market and raised money through raised equity finance or you know have you paid dividends or have you bought back shares so in this case the two biggest items by far repayment of borrowings 1.4 billion and dividends paid about half a billion dollars overall net net cash used in financing activities is about 1.7 Now, having had a look at that, we've got a much better sense of where Woolworths in 2017 got their cash from and what they used it for. Before moving on, one thing which is important is this setup for operating activities 
is what's called the direct method. So we actually see how much cash comes in from customers, how much we pay to suppliers and so on. But there is another method which is called the indirect or reconciliation method and companies can choose which one they, which one they use in the actual statements. Most Australian companies use the direct method, but they then will provide an indirect reconciliation. And what we see here is the reconciliation of profit for the period to net cash provided by operating activities. So what we do with this one is, is it allows users, users to see the difference between profit and cash flow from operating activities. So it sort of reconciles, that's why it's a reconciliation, of between profit and net cash provided by operating activities. So at the top here, we have the profit or loss after income tax expense of $1.593 billion. And if you were to go and have a look at the statement of profit or loss, you would find that figure there. At the bottom, we have the net cash provided by operating activities of $3.122 billion. And if you remember back to just a few moments ago in the cash flow statement, we actually saw that figure. So this is something which is available and this is something which we've seen before as well. And what this statement does is link this number down to this number and show you all the changes which have taken place to get to that point. Similarly, you can see in the last year they had negative 2.3 profit, but they had a positive 2.3 cash flow from operating activities. And so there are some pretty big changes happening in 2016. To focus on 2017 though, the two biggest changes, the first of which is depreciation and amortization. And across the board, this will be the biggest adjustment made in pretty much every company because depreciation and amortization is a non-cash expense. So it has the effect of reducing profit or loss, but it's obviously not cash going out. So it's not going to be something which appears in the operating activities in the statement of cash flows. For Woolworths in 2017, they had about a billion dollars in depreciation and amortization. So that effectively gets added back. They have a whole range of other adjustments sitting in there. The last one, which is the biggest one, and this is not usual, is they've actually got a, a negative adjustment for changes in their provisions. And that's, uh, that's over three quarters of a billion dollars. Now what you'll note, it's a little bit hard to see, but there is a little superscript footnote here. And what that then links to is they talk about a restructuring in the business. So again, this is a pretty one-off type of item. Um, there's some things going on in 2016, 2017, which are driving those changes. So it's not something that you'd usually see. Realistically, the depreciation and amortization adjustment is the big one between profit and cash from operating activities. So what is cash? Now, the world has changed quite dramatically and pretty much certainly in Australia, not many people are using cash right at the moment. A lot of businesses aren't accepting cash, but cash refers to all cash, cash on hand and cash equivalents. Cash and cash on hand is notes and coins held as well as deposit call accounts at financial institutions. So if you're thinking about your savings account, you know this would be something that which, which would be counted as cash. Cash equivalents, these are not necessarily cash as you and I would necessarily think. These are short-term, highly liquid investments which are easily converted to known amounts of cash with little risk of a change in value. So investments with a maturity equal to a less than three months usually fit that bill, bank overdrafts, and so on. So things like shares that you hold, these are short, these can be short-term, they're very highly liquid, they're easily converted. They're easily converted, but not to necessarily known amounts of cash with little risk of a change in value because share markets can change prices quite, quite dramatically. So they're very much things which are low risk. For our purposes, we're not really going to go into the details of what the difference between cash and cash equivalents are, but it's just to be aware that the definition of cash is a little bit broader than just kind of money you've got in a transaction account or cash you've got you know, available in notes or coins. In terms of preparing the statement of cash flows, you can either look at the cash receipts and payments, or actually look at what money moves in and what money moves out, or you can actually sort of work backwards from the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. 
you can actually, there is a way in which you can take the changes in the statement of financial position, understand what's happened with profit or loss, and then kind of rework it. As already mentioned, cash flows from operations can be presented using the, either the direct method or the indirect method. And there will be an accompanying video which will, which will cover preparing a statement of cash flows. So keep your eyes out for that, um, but it's not going to be something which we deal with in this particular video here. Getting closer to wrapping up, um, in terms of analyzing the statement of cash flows, there's going to be some things which are important to have a look at. So do you receive less cash than what you paid? So looking at operating cash flows. Operating cash flows should generally be positive. Certainly, maybe not so much for a startup business, well, almost not for a startup business, but certainly once a business is operating well, it should be generating cash. If the net cash from operating activities is lower than profit after tax, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a red flag because generally profit after tax will be lower because of the depreciation expense. So if something else is going on, um, you know, it might be worth having a look at look at this the financials in more detail and looking at what the company is up to in more detail. The last ones then are then looking at what you're getting your cash from and what you're using it for in other purposes. Are you borrowing, no, not borrowing, are you getting cash from equity markets and you're using it to finance operating activities? So in a sense, are your operating activity cash flows negative, but your financing activities positive and then mainly from equity? Again, startups are going to be slightly different. So this is talking more of continuing businesses and businesses which has been in operations for a little while, but it's good to understand where they're driving their operating cash flows from. Inflows from investing activities are inconsistent. So we'll see in, in the video linked video where we look at Woolworths in more detail, you look at some of their CapEx spending, it's pretty consistent over time. So what are they doing with their investing activities? Do they seem to be a bit all over the shop or do they seem like they've got some sort of strategy behind it? Lastly, proceeds from borrowings are continually greater than repayment. If they're having to borrow money consistently, it means they're generally not generating the cash flows that they need from operations. Again, it all comes down to if this business is, is going to succeed in the longer term, they need to be able to generate cash from operations. We can use trend and ratio analysis and the trend analysis is information about an entity over a period of time. A one year period doesn't really tell us too much. Two years gives you two points. Again, it doesn't really show you a trend, actually it doesn't show you a trend better than one period. What you'd like to have is a period of information so you can, or like a longer period of information so you can start to assess, you know, what is going on. Then you'd also like to then cross check that with kind of what's going on with the economy over time. What else is sort of impacting this particular business? Very hard to do with just a kind of one year view of it. We also look at ratio analysis and we do that just to interp help interpret key items in the financial reports. So we'll look at you know, certain kind of comparisons between, you know, where they get their cash flows from, how does it affect their profitability? Can they pay off their debt as it falls due? There are different ways in which we can do this. And there's a whole video where we look at that in a little bit more detail and we calculate it for Woolworths over a period of 10, 10 or so years. So in summary, a statement of cash flows enables a user to evaluate the entity's ability to generate cash. It provides a summary of cash and cash and types of cash flows both in and out. The format is governed by accounting standards and interpretation requires a general evaluation as well as use of trend and ratio analysis.